So here we are in Vera's garden and she's going to read a short story that I haven't heard yet called The Celebration. Right, uh, this is a story that I wrote in 2017 and I thought it would be, well it's not exactly happy but it's, it's not a sombre story which I sometimes like to do. It's called The Celebration. Mary was smiling as she placed the phone back on its receiver. What a pity Eileen had just left. She'd have to wait now until her part-time carer came back to help her get ready for bed that night. Mary had made an extraordinary fuss about having even part-time help, but the latest stroke had put paid to her final resisting stand, and now she was really pleased to have Eileen. Eileen was just the sort of practical, down-to-earth woman that Mary appreciated. Plus, she was white and British. Not that Mary was in any way racist. Far from it. It just seemed that these ethnic minority people had become so touchy of late. You had to be careful what you said to them all the time, or they'd be running off to their supervisor, and the next thing you knew, they'd be taking you to court. Mary wheeled herself over to the kitchen counter to put the kettle on and started to think about the forthcoming birthday party that Elizabeth, her daughter, had announced over the phone. Announced was not exactly the word as Elizabeth, being used to her mother's automatic rejection of any attempts to arrange anything relating to Mary's very unbusy schedule, had tiptoed round the project of the 90th birthday party. She had lied and had said the idea had come from the twins, Mary's precious boys who had both excelled themselves in the army and were now long since retired. One as a lieutenant colonel and the other as a general. The boys rarely visited their mother but they were a great source of pride and joy to Mary. Elizabeth, on the other hand, who visited frequently, did not rate very highly in her mother's esteem. She still considered her daughter somewhat unstable, and the job of teaching, which Elizabeth had come to in her mid-thirties after travelling the world and living abroad, could not in any way compete with the careers of her two brothers. Elizabeth had already booked the communal hall in the adjacent church a year ago, but had waited until nearer the time to approach her mother on the subject. Now, at the other end of the phone, Elizabeth also smiled. I told you that the old bat would be pleased if you've said it was Jack and Philip's idea, didn't I, said her husband. Elizabeth continued smiling. What would I do without you, Tom? You know just how to handle Mum whereas I revert to an awkward 12-year-old whenever I'm with her. Well then, you deserve to be treated like one as a consequent, continued Tom. What about standing up to her for a change? You've got nothing to apologise for. She should be proud of you, parish councillor, school governor, mother of four, and the best wife I've ever had. Bridling at 65 does not come as naturally as it does at 35. But Elizabeth accomplished it gracefully and gave her husband a hug. Meanwhile, Mary lost no time and rang Jack. Sorry, said his wife, Jack's already out on the golf course. She ran then Philip, who after greeting her and inquiring about her health said, Look, Mum, I've no idea who's doing the catering. Elizabeth's organising all that side of things. I imagine it's going to be a pretty good bash, though. Hope you're up to it. I gather there'll be a few hobnobs popping in from the council, too. So you'd better get a new outfit. Kitting my own family out is costing me a fortune. Mary found herself repeating the well, well, well refrain for the rest of the day. So it was, in fact, thanks to Elizabeth, that she was going to have a party. She had been wondering if any of them had thought about her 90th birthday. 
although she knew, of course, that they were all very busy. So, her little girl was finally proving to be a capable grown woman. Still, maybe a good idea to get her round at the weekend and make sure of the details. She might like to look over the guest list herself and make appropriate adjustments. She'd need to check that the invitations didn't have coloured balloons on them, for example. If one were actually going to arrive at the age of 90, the least one could do was to have something dignified. Yes, a simple white card, possibly slightly tinted, with plain black printing on it. Times, New Roman, of course, not some fancy arty-farty lettering all over the page. One couldn't absolutely trust Elizabeth not to put a big gold figure of 90 in the middle either, could one? The whole project cheered Mary up enormously. By the time that Eileen arrived that evening, she was running on high octane excitement. Had her daughter known of this, her own mood of quiet satisfaction would have been rapidly transformed into one of discouraged, worried discouragement. It was she who had persuaded the two boys that their mother should be told beforehand, beforehand, rather than be confronted by a surprise party. Surely that would have killed her. As things turned out, however, the excitement did prove too much for Mary's worn-out body. And a few weeks before the party, Mary had another stroke, and this time a fatal one. The celebration had to be swiftly transformed into a celebration of Mary's life. Elizabeth very efficiently organised the decoration of the church hall, and the birthday look list was a funeral one. The invitations were, of course, on white card with black printing, Times New Roman Front. Jack and Philip's wives and daughters covered their new expensive colourful dresses with lilac or mauve shawls for the occasion, and the afternoon funeral reception went with a swing. The councillors made speeches commending Mary's many contributions as the wine flowed, the residing vicar found himself declaring that a small memorial plaque would be placed in a position of honour in St Saviour's entrance lobby. Relatives and lost friends came together and the cake was cut. The company rose to its feet and gave a toast to their almost 90-year-old late To Mary. She would have been proud of them all. Very good. <laughs> well, there you go. I hope you've been taking photos of the flowers.